Hey, Richard Bryce here, Tennis Hacker. In this video, I wanna help you to improve your ball tracking by showing you how to do five very simple exercises. As you probably know, watching the ball through to contact is really important for being able to hit the ball cleanly and consistently. That's why when you watch top professional players play, you see that they track the ball both with their eyes and their head right through to contact and they're often keeping their head still for a fraction of a second after the ball has left the strings to really emphasize the visual stability. Now you probably already knew this, but the chances are you've tried it and you found it very difficult. Even though you know what you're supposed to do, you know you're supposed to track the ball, it's still very hard to make it happen. So in this video, I'm gonna be explaining why that is and give you some exercises to start to work on fixing the underlying issue. And what this comes down to is that there are physical requirements in order to be able to track the ball well. Obviously, you need to concentrate, you need to focus during your practice and your matches, but you also need to have the visual capabilities and the vestibular capabilities. So I'm gonna explain what I mean by that. In terms of the visual system, everything that you do on court is based on your visual system and how well you can see. So there are lots of different visual skills that are important for reading where the ball's going and tracking the ball and starting your swing at the right time and things like that. But one of the foundational components is how well your eyes move. And this is something that people take for granted because they don't actually assess this when you go to the eye doctor most of the time. They assess your level of visual acuity and how clearly you can read letters from a certain distance, but they often don't check the way that your eyes move. So a lot of players have less than optimal function in terms of their eye movements. Now this isn't the sort of thing that you necessarily notice in everyday life, but the requirements in tennis are really hard in terms of tracking the ball, traveling at multiple different speeds in multiple different directions. So if your eye movements aren't working well enough, it's one of the big things that's gonna prevent you from tracking the ball. So I'm gonna show you four different exercises to start to improve the quality of your eye movements. And then we're also gonna be doing one exercise for your vestibular system. So the vestibular system lives in your inner ear. This is your balance system. You might not have heard about it before, but it's a really big deal because as soon as your body moves, and especially as soon as your head moves, it's now this vestibular system in your inner ear that controls your eye movements. So when I'm standing still or when I'm sitting still, it's all the visual system. But when you start to move, now the vestibular system takes control. And obviously when you're playing tennis, you are constantly moving. And especially as you're tracking the ball through to contact, you're very violently moving your head. So the vestibular system has to function well to now control your eyes and keep them locked on the target so that you can focus on the ball through to contact. So we're gonna do four exercises for the visual system, and then we're gonna be doing one exercise for the vestibular system. And as you work on these consistently, it's gonna make a big difference in your ability to track the ball through to contact. Okay, so we'll start by training our eye movements. And when we're training eye movements, we're thinking about working on a couple of different things. Firstly, we've got six different muscles that move our eyes in different directions. They're called extraocular eye muscles. And in order to activate all of them and train all of them, we actually need to work on eight different directions. We need to do left, right, up, down, and then the four different diagonals. We're also gonna be training the various different parts of the brain that are involved in creating eye movements. And there's a lot of different parts of the brain involved, so we're not gonna go through all of them. But it is important to understand that we've got two main types of eye movements. We've got fast eye movements and slow eye movements. So when the ball is traveling slowly, you could potentially track it in a smooth motion with your eyes. So that's called a smooth pursuit. If the ball's traveling too quickly, there's a cutoff point at which you can't follow something smoothly anymore, and your eyes actually have to make lots of little jumps called saccades or predictive saccades when you're tracking a ball because your eyes skip forwards to where the ball is hopefully going to be. But in everyday life, we're also constantly doing saccades, looking at different things around the room, or even when we're reading, we're doing lots of different saccades. So we need to train both movements. Fast eye movement saccades, slow my, uh, eye movements, the smooth pursuits. And we need them both in eight different directions. So we'll start with the saccades, really simple to train. We're just gonna use our thumbs as targets. So you can be looking at the cuticle on your thumbnail. You're gonna hold them out in front. Now my arms are completely straight. 
make sure your arms are straight. I'm also starting with a small range of motion. So I'm not having it out wide, it's just about shoulder width initially. And then you're just gonna switch between the targets. And 20 switches is a good starting point. And as you get more experienced at it, you'll be able to go faster and faster. But you want to be as accurate as you can, trying to keep your head still. We're then gonna do the same thing vertically, switching between the targets and then the diagonals. And that is our eight different directions. So we've done left and we've done right, we've done up and down, up and left, down and right, up and right, down and left. Now, as I said, 20 reps is gonna be a good starting point, but just like all of the training, we want to progress things over time. So you want to gradually build up the number of repetitions that you can do in the row. You can also gradually increase the size of the saccades that you're doing. So smaller is easier, bigger is harder. So that's stuff that you can work to progress. The smooth pursuits are gonna be similar, but different. This time, you'll be, again, keeping your head still, but now you're just gonna follow your thumb out and back. So I'm gonna to work to the left, I'm gonna work to the right, I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna go down, up and left, up and right, down and left, down and right, and all the same things apply. I'm gonna start with a small range of motion and a low number of reps, and then I'm gonna build it up over time. So initially, you know, maybe three to five repetitions in each direction is gonna be a good starting point, but you can increase it fairly significantly over time, starting with that small range of motion, and then eventually challenging my ability to move further and further away, providing it doesn't cause any eye strain. So there are first two exercises, the next two exercises we've got are gonna be a little bit different, but again, we've got a, a fast version and a slow version, but we're now working on something called accommodation and vergence. So accommodation is kind of changing the shape of your lens so you can focus on things at different distances. So this is obviously extremely important when the ball's coming towards you and when you're switching between hitting your shot, looking down the other end of the court and changing your focal length. And here, again, we're targeting parts of the brain. We're also thinking about some muscles called ciliary muscles that change the shape of the lens. And then we've got convergence as a target moves towards you, or your eyes work in coordination coming in, and divergence as a target moves away, and your eyes work in coordination as it moves away. This time around, we're gonna start with a slow exercise, and we call this one a pencil push-up. So I'm gonna hold a pen or pencil, arm's length, focus my eyes on the tip of the pen, slowly bring it in towards the bridge of my nose. Now, as I do this, I'm trying to go right in between my eyes. As I do this, I should be able to bring it all the way in without the tip of the pen splitting in two. It might go a little bit blurry when it gets to a certain point. Blurriness is okay, but what we don't want is the pen to split in two because both of our eyes are camera lenses. If one of the eyes stops coming inwards, the target is gonna to start to split in two and it's gonna give us the illusion of two things there. So you're gonna bring it in as close as you can without it happening. If you can bring it all the way in like me, that's what you'll use as your training exercise. If you can't, you might find that it starts to split in two at this distance or this distance or whatever distance it is, that's the distance that you're gonna stop at and use as kind of your training exercise. And then, you know, five repetitions in each hand is gonna be a good starting point. Again, building it up over time. Now, if you aren't able to get it all the way in without it splitting in two, it indicates a specific problem and something that you uh, want to try and address because it's gonna be affecting your tennis. Now, I'm not gonna go into detail here about it, but this is the sort of thing that I help players with. So if you'd like to learn more about vision training for tennis or brain-based training in general for tennis, so you can improve your coordination and skill and a number of other attributes that you'll need to play high-level tennis, I've got a class that's gonna teach you all about it. I'll place a link up there and I'll place a link down in the description. The class will also teach you about my program because I've got a, a brain-based training program that I use to work with players. So I'll explain all about that if you'd like to dive in further. Okay, so the links will be there for you. But that's pencil push-ups. The next exercise that we've got is gonna be near fast switches. So this is the fast version. Your near target is gonna be however close you can get it. So for me, I've got it all the way in on the bridge of my nose. But if you can only bring it to that distance away without the target slitting into, 
that's the distance you'll use. You'll then use a far target that's on the other side of the room. So the bigger the room that you can do it in, the better, because you want to work on changing as much length as you can. So I'm gonna start looking at the near target, switch to the far target, and I'm just gonna switch backwards and forwards between the two as quickly as I can. But when you do it, you want to make sure that the target comes into focus, or as much focus as you can. So right in here, it isn't crystal clear for me. It's only a single target, but it's not crystal clear. For it to be crystal clear, I would need it there. So it won't go crystal clear, but it should be one single target. And then again, once you look at the far target, for some people it might take one, two, three seconds before the eyes settle in. But over time, you'll be able to do it faster and faster and faster. So that's your goal. Now for this one, 20, maybe 30 switches is gonna be a good target to start with. But again, the goal is to be able to increase the number of reps and the speed over time. And there are four eye movement exercises. We've got saccades, smooth pursuits, pencil push-ups, and then near fast switches. Okay, now we're gonna work on the vestibular system. And when we're training our vestibular system, we're targeting a few different things. We're gonna be working on the same eye muscles that we just talked about, some of the same parts of the brain, but with the addition of other areas of the brain that are more related to vestibular function, and then the vestibular system itself that lives in the inner ear. And the vestibular system, as you can see, it's a funny looking thing, but we've got these three round loopy things called semicircular canals that are connected to our eye muscles. So when we're training the vestibular system, we need to work on the same directions that we do when we're training our eye movements. The exercise is very simple. You're gonna be using your thumb again as a target, and now you're gonna be moving your thumb and your head and eyes at the same speed. And it's the vestibular system that really allows you to track the ball through to contact. And it's issues with this system or lack of communication between the visual system and the vestibular system that's one of the main reasons that players struggle to watch the ball through to contact. So this is one of the most important exercises you can do. So you'll be turning your head and moving your arm at the same speed. And depending on your range of motion, for me, my neck only goes that far. So my arm is only gonna go that far. I don't wanna take my arm to there and have my head pointing there. I want to keep them lined up at all times. So you'll be doing to the left. You'll be going to the right. You'll be going upwards. You'll be going downwards, and then the four different diagonals. Now left, right, up and down are fairly simple, but the diagonals are funny movements because these canals are at unusual angles. So to really activate them, if I'm going up and left, it'll look like that, but it's a combination of two movements. It's a combination of turning my head to the left and rotating it back. So that and that, but ideally you want to take it directly into the position, but you might find that you need to look in a mirror and try and find this position first because a lot of players struggle to actually get the head into the right position. But that's what up and left looks like. Up and right looks like that. Again, it's a combination of turning your head to the right and then tilting it back. And then for the downwards diagonals, it's kind of the opposite. So that's the position that we're gonna finish in, but it's turning the head to the left and then bringing the chin down, or turning the head to the right, and then bringing the chin down for the down and right position. So there are different directions. Three to five reps in each direction is gonna be a good starting point, but again, you can build up the number of repetitions over time, and start nice and slowly, and again, build that up over time. Now, because we're training the balance system here, if it's not functioning amazingly well, people can feel a little bit dizzy or lightheaded or nauseous by doing these exercises. If that happens to you, just stop and take a rest and wait till you feel better. But if that happens to you, it tells you that there's something going on with this system that's less than optimal. And just like we said with the pencil push-ups, it is going to be reducing how well you can track the ball and negatively affecting other aspects of your game. So it's something that I highly advise that you work on. Now what I'm showing you here is gonna be a good starting point, but there's a lot of other stuff that you can do. And if you'd like to learn more about that,
the best thing to do is check out the free class. The link will be up there and down there because it's gonna explain a lot more about brain-based training. And it's also gonna tell you about my program and how I work with players. But these are our five exercises. We've got saccades, smooth pursuits, pencil push-ups, near fast switches, and now we've got the VORC for the vestibular system. You can put this together as a mini little program. You can work on it each day, and if you build the repetitions up, it's gonna to start to really help to improve the quality of your ball tracking, especially if you combine it with good quality focused work on court. A lot of players also find that they do well with these sort of exercises warming up before they play because obviously if you've got the sort of job where you are sitting down all day and you're looking at a screen and stuff like that, that doesn't prepare your visual system to then go out and play tennis. So if you're playing after work, just like you warm your body up, it can be a really good idea to do a few of these exercises and you'll find that you'll just start to hit the ball more cleanly as soon as you start playing. So that's something you can also do. Now, if you've got any questions about these exercises, brain training for tennis in general, or just any other comments, I would love you to leave them down below. It'd be awesome if you could give me a thumbs up, maybe share the video with some of your friends that play tennis. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel before, it's always much appreciated if you could do that as well. Okay, I'll catch you next time.